Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is John Hammond, and welcome back to another YouTube video. We're still looking at LaTeX. We just got a really basic Hello World program or a little PDF, beautiful document that we created with LaTeX. And it was really funny. In, in preparation to make this tutorial, I actually just wanted to get like a nice little visual for you guys, you know, as you started to watch. So I Googled LaTeX. I went to images, and I completely forgot uh, uh, that it was not LaTeX, the programming language, but also a LaTeX. So, okay. Regardless, let's talk about some text formatting and some text decoration within LaTeX. I'm going to save this as a new file. I'll just call it textdecoration.txt. So we got a little hello world, and let's go to new line for it. And let's say we want bold text. We want bold text. So control B to display this out. We got we want whoa a little typo there. We want bold text. And notice that it actually displayed that on a new line because I specified a single line space in between this line and the other line. That tells LaTeX, hey, put this on a new line. If I actually had it just one line ahead, control B to run it, it doesn't add the new line there. We can specify, hey, we literally want a new line in LaTeX with two backslashes, and that will put it on a new line for us. But you'll notice now there's an indent for a Hello World line, and there's no indent for our We Want Bold Text on that new line because it's like it's still part of that paragraph. If we wanted to, we could specify no indent on the first line. Now when I run this, you can see Hello World is moved over to the side. I'll close out of that. And um, that's pretty much how you can work with those lines, real simply, in LaTeX. Just know you're not going to get a new line in between things. If you just specify one new line in between them, you have to specify another new line in between them. Sure. Okay. Let's actually get that bold text now. The syntax for that is text BF for text boldface. And then wrapped inside our uh, curly braces here, all the information will be in bold text. Now, if we wanted italics it's similar syntax to that text and then it for italics bf for boldface it for italics and we now have italic text what if we wanted underline text well the syntax for that is underline and now we have underline text simple stuff just syntax formatting that we want to have. And let's see what else we can do. I'm going to check it out. Actually, head over to do a little bit of research. Let's do LaTeX text formatting. And there's some more information, all this, all online. You can set up different line spaces. You can um, supply stretch spaces. Okay, so let's get, like if I wanted to display as a simple header, my name, John Hammond being the author, Display that out. And we can also set a H fill to get on the same line something allocated to the end of the margin, like the right side, right aligned. And let's put the date just like they're doing with backslash today. Now you can see way over on the side there, there's the date. And you'll notice way at the very end of this uh, document, they explain some simple things that are. Uh, latex ready-made strings like the date being today like we just filled in and then there's other stuff for latex we can actually specify latex is something we actually want to display out and we'll get that pretty latex symbol that they normally use to denote their latex stuff there's some other stuff in this document which would be pretty cool to look through um, I think spaces hyphenating stuff. You can roll in through this if you wanted to. Using quotes is an interesting thing. Like if we wanted to write a book, we could say that John said, you'll actually notice I get errors. I get some weird red syntax highlighting if I try to use regular quotes in here, because that won't actually run, or at least it won't give us the output that we want. If we wanted real quotes, it looks like it does give us some, but not real pretty quotes. If we wanted to, we could specify within backticks. If I press the backtick symbol, now we'll get a single quote. And we can specify this one more time with another set of backticks. And now we'll even be syntax highlighted like double quotes, like real dialogue. Nice. 
You can see that denoted in the uh, argument here. Other things they discuss are looks like slash marks. Oh, and they recommend subscript and superscript. We can do that with text subscript. Um, velocity initial or something. How about that? Looks like we get an error. Probably have to have a space there. No. Nope. Text subscript. What is wrong with that? Okay, it looks like it needs a current LaTeX version or something to use it, a subscript like that. Um, so that's giving an error there. I'm not really going to mess with that, but continue along superscript. <laughs> that works. I tested that. That works. All right. Whoa, whoa. What are you doing, Wikipedia? All right. Other stuff they get into are hyphens and strikes, like dashes and hyphens. Normally, if you wanted to be like... Something interrupted me. When we display that, it's not a very long hyphen. It's just like a regular dash. But they note here that you can have a, a range if you actually supply two dashes. And it'll be a longer syntax. They also display the same thing with three dashes. To get a M dash, or like a longer punctuation dash. Now you can see that's even longer, like something interrupted me. Cool. Also, they get into ellipsis, because if you wanted to write something dramatic with dot dot dots, <laughs> there are no errors to that. It'll, it'll look pretty all right, but since it's a single like character, it's pretty small in the font space. If you wanted to make it more in-depth ellipsis, it says they, they talk about it here. You can actually just enter this uh, a special command with backslash L dots. Now when we run this, the spacing is proper. So There you go. Pretty simple stuff. Again, just syntax. Text boldface, text italics, bf for boldface, it for italics, underline. Let's actually see if we can use strike through text or stuff like that. Or latex underline with dashes. Just to get a little more information as to what more we can do. Cool. They specify stuff with different packages. Packages, it looks like. Packages can extend LaTeX functionality, so we can use package right outside of our document environment, but in like the header or the information of our uh, LaTeX document. So we can use ulem, it looks like will work for us, and you can use dot uline or dash uline. So now dot uline, dotted underline. No errors. Dotted underline, cool. And then dash U line for dash underline will looks like a dashed underline. Nice. How do we get a strike through text? Do a little bit more research there. It looks like the syntax ooh actually works with S U L or soul. So if we wanted to, we could use package soul. And then ST looks like we'll get a strike through. Strike through text. No errors. And hey, strike through text. It works just fine for us. Cool. Very, very cool. Simple stuff. Just a matter of knowing the syntax in LaTeX, and I just want to run through a little bit of demonstration. So. Oh, it looks like you can even use it with ULAM too. Do we even need soul? S out? Sweet, it does the same thing for us. So yeah, we don't even need the soul or S-O-U-L package. We can just use ULEM. ULEM will give us a little bit more uh, information there, or uh, a little bit more functionality. That's cool. Cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Simple stuff, but knowing LaTeX is an awesome tool to have in your, in your pocket, a little weapon on your belt, you know? <laughs> All right. See you later.